You're listening to the Uncensored Direct Marketing Show. This show is designed for direct response marketers who want raw, unfiltered conversion tips and secrets to scale their offers profitably to reach their next million. I'm Maria Sparagas. I'm the founder of Direct Paint It and your host. Now let's dive in. Welcome everybody to another episode of Uncensored Direct Marketing. Today I have a very special guest. Her name is Gurleen Singh. Gurleen and I connected uh, through a couple of groups, a couple of masterminds, and we finally had the uh, opportunity to meet face-to-face uh, last week. And when I met Gurleen, I instantly loved her. And I said, you know what? I need to have Gurleen on my podcast. So Gurleen, welcome. And thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. Thanks for having me. This is cool. First podcast, guys. First podcast. So yeah, we have Gurleen. She's she's a podcast newbie. Uh, so we're I'm going to try to make her comfortable. We're going to have a conversation. And the basis of the conversation for everybody listening is basically Gurleen and I were just chatting away when we when we met and she said some really interesting stuff that I think is going to be very interesting for um, newer copywriters or people kind of entering the space to know and to understand and to kind of be aware of. Um, so I think it's just going to be a good conversation for people who are just kind of getting into the space. And also, as a side note, for people who are business owners or people who are more tenured, it's never a bad thing to kind of know what other people are going through. Like when I'm interviewing employees or when I'm interviewing uh, freelancers, it's nice to know like the feelings of, you know, somebody who's just starting how stressful or kind of keeps things real. So uh, I hope everybody listening will will get, you know, some value from there. So again, thank you, Gurleen, for 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 coming on. I know you're nervous and you're stressed, but we're going to do great and we're going to have a, we're going to have a good conversation. Um, so without further ado, I just want to, Gurleen, can you tell me a little bit more about just what you do, how you've, you know, how, how your career has progressed in the last couple of years? Um, I like that you said a couple of years because it hasn't been a couple of years. It's only been like a year and a half. Well, um, it took you a while to get here, right? You did stuff did, before did. that got you to where you are. So, so yes, give yes. us a little, a little brief history on Gurleen. On Gurleen. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so where should I start? Undergrad. So during my undergrad, I, so I started human kinetics. Um, and basically that's just a science that's the study of it's like the science of human body movement, like kinesiology. That's what it is. And the goal was to be a physio because I worked at a physio clinic for, God, I don't even know, three, four years, maybe. Uh, and I loved the career. I thought it was, I thought it was brilliant. Like I genuinely loved the career. And so, yeah, I went, I, I went to get, uh, do my undergrad and then, um, then it was time to apply. I applied to PT school, uh, physiotherapy school. And <clears throat> Basically, without going on a tangent, when I was applying or deciding where I wanted to apply, I kept looking into schools in Ireland and New Zealand and Australia because they're very well known for their PT schools. Like some of the professors here in UFT are from New Zealand, for example. But eventually I realized like, you know what, I'm just finding, trying to find excuses to travel. Like I just, it's just like, that's, that's literally what I came down to. And it was just this weird internal struggle of like, do I really do I want to walk away from all this? Like four or five years of me studying and working towards this career. More than that, actually, more like seven, eight years um, of working towards this career that I thought was my dream. Um, but yeah, so but and yeah, I just did it. I was just like, you know what? I want to travel more than I want to be a physio, and I don't think I'm going to regret it. So then it came down to how am I going to make money? And so it was classic Google, how to make money online. Like that's literally what it was, how to make uh, money online. And I, yeah, came, went, went through a bunch of things, you know, selling stuff on Amazon. Um, what else was there? Uh, becoming like, a, <laughs> like an Instagram influencer. I, I didn't consider that idea seriously, but I was like, I guess I could like become a photographer and like post my pictures and make money that way. Because, you know, I saw people doing it. Um yeah, obviously that did, that didn't that didn't go, but it didn't pan out. <laughs> no, I did did not pan out. Um, and then and then I came across a copywriting ad uh, while scrolling scrolling through Instagram, and that was my first intro to to copywriting, and oh. that was December twenty nineteen. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's yeah. really like, we're like in the throes of you kind of getting started, <laughs> but 
in the short time that you've you've kind of got started, sorry for the interjection here, but I do want to mention that in the short time that you you've been in the industry, I feel like you like I've I probably met you close to the beginning of mm-hmm. your you industry. definitely did. Yeah. yeah. And I just I've seen you like whoosh, just like <laughs> you know, like not Good. not only not only for work level, I, I just find like we're always kind of like just little messages chatting. Uh you've become more confident, I feel you've like kind of opened Jeez. up. A little bit more like you're you're just you're out there you know what i mean like i feel like i'm like girleen who's girleen i know girleen 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 like i've, I've been hearing you <laughs> so so that's that's a good thing it's all like because i feel like it's been a like you from what i know about you i feel like it, it probably had been at least a couple of years but now you're like 18 months anyway i, I cut you off but i want you to continue so you it, you saw this ad and yes. you were like this is it yeah so i saw the ad because i had I want to say like three rules. One being a hat, like I need to find a job or career that was remote. Like that was like the number one rule. It has to be remote. And um, it had to be, uh, I guess the word would be, I don't, I don't know, profitable, scalable, like something that would last. Like I didn't okay. want to get into something just to get into something else later. Like I didn't want a temporary fix. I didn't want a band aid. I wanted something that I could do for the rest of my life. Like I wanted this to be my career. Um, and so like you mentioned, you're like, oh, like Julian, I thought you're doing this a little longer, but it's only been 18 months. And that's because once I decided, okay, copywriting is it, I went all in, like I went, I went for it. Um, because I, the goal wasn't to hit X amount in five, seven years or whatever. The goal was, uh, improve my skill, improve my craft the best and uh, the fastest way I can and the best way I can. And yeah. so after, after I saw that ad, I signed up for a course, uh, it was okay. It, it, I can't say, I, I won't get into it, but I, it wasn't the best course. It, it also wasn't the worst. Um, but it was my first taste in copywriting. Um, and then eventually, I'm not even too sure how, but I eventually um, came across Stefan, Stefan Georgi, and um, you know, signed up for his email list. And then, and then it just kind of snowballed into like being exposed to everybody else, like how I met you, how I met Laura, Sam Novak, John Caprani, like everybody. Um, And from there, like joined the mastermind, uh, took more better quality courses. (laughs) Cause now, cause now it's kind of like, I wasn't complete noob anymore. So I could like figure out what was good and what wasn't. (laughs) Yeah. No, I mean, and, and taking, you know, at the beginning, I find a, a lot of people just like, even in my journey, it's like, you you have to you have to do some self learning before you start buying like mm-hmm. large masterminds or whatever because you're gonna get into a, you know where the big boys are and if you don't know anything you're really kind of like oh you know people are gonna be like well you know you, you need to know some terminology you need to know a little bit so it's always good to kind of get yourself at like I feel like at the twenty percent mark at least or something mm-hmm. to to be able to talk to people and 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 kind of converse but I am curious about something like. Did you have yeah. any kind of experience or like, I mean, you saw an ad for copywriting. Great. You know, like I could see an ad for copywriting. It wouldn't really <laughs> change anything for me. I'd be like, good, good for you. <laughs> but, but like, so you saw this ad for copywriting. Was there any like experience that you had or were, did somebody ever tell you, Hey, girl, you're a great writer. Or did you ever have any exposure to it other than seeing that ad and starting to kind of look at it from there? Um, no. Like I had no exposure to people making money online, uh, quite literally. And um, there's this, the reason even the, I, how the idea was implanted in my brain was because, again, Instagram, um, because I follow um, this guy named Sam Colder on Instagram. He's a photographer, a videographer, and he's also Toronto based. And so, so when you see someone making money uh, online, cause I knew his income was primarily through what he was doing and, and, and traveling everywhere. And he was able to work remotely. And also he's from Toronto. So it's kind of like, Oh, he's like, you know, it's like your yeah. people. It's like, he's, if he's able to do it. How can I do it? And that was the major switch. I, I remember that because um, it's a little off topic, but when I find that when people want to do something, an example, travel, it's kind of like, oh, I can't because, oh, but, oh, well, like there's, it's, it's that sort of instant thought um, that you have. Um, and, but people don't realize that if they stop uh, saying, st- if you stop st- uh, starting sentences with but and s- instead start, start them with the word how, your, your life changes. If that- makes any sense no it does because now your brain is working towards a solution instead of staring at a wall and there's and there's you know and uh 
I completely agree with that. And I have to say, obviously, I'm 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 quite older than you. Just a couple I'm not of years. that old. <laughs> a couple of years, like whatever. I, I'm getting to my next point with my next question is that, you know, how do you feel like I mean, I'm going to say how I feel is like when I met you, your demeanor, you're smiling, you're happy, you're, you're, oh. you're just kind of like, like a fun vibe, you know what <laughs> I mean? How, how do you find like just being in this copywriting space? And there's some very, you know, I, I see a lot of people like, how much should I charge for this? And nobody's, a lot of people are not talking about the goals of things before they talk mm. about how much money. And it's kind of like, at the end of the day, the client's going to pay you the money. Like if you can, and they'll pay you more if you actually have a real goal for them and real actionables and things that you're going to provide and blah, blah, blah. So how do you find your, your attitude in general has helped you, uh, in this career? Um, trying to figure out how the best answer that, um, so, okay, I'll answer that, but I want to explain this first because it relates oh, when I initially, so when I first started, I started writing on Upwork and I remember my, one of my first projects was writing articles like, $12 or something like really sad per article. <laughs> and, um, and then like he, like, he liked them, they were fine, whatever. And then he's like, I'm going to give you a testimonial. And I was like, sick. Oh my God. Yes. I get a testimonial and then I can get more clients. This is amazing. I was like over the moon and he sends a testimonial and it's something, it was something along the lines of, uh, yeah, girl was really easy to work with, super friendly, handed it on time. And I was so disappointed. I was like, this is nothing about my skill. Like, how is this going to get me good, like more clients? And um, yeah, but like that was, that was right in the beginning. And a year later, it's kind of like, my, my, my point is that right there, uh, that attitude has made a, a huge difference, like a bigger difference than I, than I thought it would. Like, I didn't realize uh, just, I don't know, my attitude towards things being, being friendly, being kind, um, making like funny jabs. Like I make fun of you in the douche mobile because that's cause I know like you can take a joke. Like you're, you're good. You're good. You're not going to get offended over it. And you um, love it too. <laughs> I love it. It's a really good car. It's a really good car uh, SUV. Um, anyways. Um, but that has as, as silly as it sounds, obviously you need the, the skill, but the reality is people, clients, business, everybody's, everybody's human. No one wants to work with someone difficult, no matter how good you are. Yeah. So like a lot of the uh, referrals I get is because of that, simply because. People don't realize is that it's so important because if somebody doesn't like you, they're not going to work with you. Even if you can show them everything, you made all this money and whatever, if they have to talk to you like once a week and they don't like your face, well, guess what? You're not getting that contract. You're done. It's, it's true. And like, um, yeah, obviously uh, uh, now, yeah, I, I would like to think I'm a whole lot more skilled than I was the, on day one with those $12 articles. But um, in the beginning, because you have no, you, you have nothing, like you have no samples or no, no skill, whatever. Yeah. yeah, but the point the point is your, your attitude, the way you carry yourself, the way you treat people, it, it takes you uh, really, really far, actually. Like, yeah, it's no, insane. I, I completely agree. And I, I like, I mean, I, ho- I think people listening, um, you know, if you were, if you were waiting for something technical, it's funny that it's not technical. It's actually just being like a, a decent human being and like not, you know, and trying to help people out. And if you don't know something genuine, yeah. Being genuine. Like when I, when I contacted that processor, I was like, dude, I, I don't understand any of this. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, and don't, don't make people feel stupid. Like, you know, you're a copywriter and I'm a business owner. I, I can bet you a hundred times that if, you know, I give you a project, something to do with copy, you'll probably know a lot more than me, but like, and then I'll know a lot more about merchant. It doesn't matter. You know, people know about different stuff. So don't ever, you know, demean people or make them feel small. And mm-hmm. anyway, it's not my style at least. So, mm-hmm. uh, but then kind of going on that and talking about like lessons learned and stuff like that. What are the, mm-hmm. the like the key things when you were that $12 uh, a blog <laughs> or article copywriter to now when obviously you're charging thousands of dollars for your work and so forth. Um, what are some key things like other than attitude or, or kind of like more like on the strategy side that really help you? Was it like really the masterminds or was it like some type of networking? Like, I don't want to lead you to an answer. Uh, oh, I see. Um, it would definitely be, honestly, it, would, it was definitely the mastermind and the networking, like the networking that was, that has been huge, like that, like huge, like that. But if you really want to shoot your career forward, network with the right people. Um, I, and the reason why I say the right people is because initially I was not networking with the right people. Okay. Put. Um, but um, 
And the, and, uh, the reason why I say that is because that also just leads you to, again, better courses if, you want, if you're talking specifically, I guess, strategy. Like, and by that, I mean, like, for example, like Stefan, like Ste if I didn't meet Stefan, I would not have come across the RMB, RMBC course. And then I would not have been able to write, I don't, I don't even know, a ridiculous amount of sales letters from September till now. Okay. Like too many, too many sales letters. <laughs> but my point is, my point is that it wouldn't have happened if, if, if I, it was, if it was not for the network that I was. So what is bad networking do. though? What is bad? You, cause you said, it, you Ugh. know, bad networking a bit, like guide somebody that's like, okay, I want to be a copywriter. I want to start writing. I want to start working in direct response, whatever it is, whether it's copywriting ads or whatever, it kind of all relates yeah. to the same thing. What, what, what's, what should be like step one? Okay. You know, we all, we love Stefan. So Stefan, I'm going to make him listen. Follow to Stefan. We love him. So follow yeah. Stefan. That's number one. But number two, like how could like other than Stefan or, or if you're getting the space, like what is, you know, should you go on Facebook and join a whole bunch of groups? Should you start emailing people like crazy or how did you feel about your experience on Upwork? Like, how was that for you? Okay. Um, well, to start off, I wish I did this, but I didn't do this, was to join free groups on Facebook. Prior to copywriting, Facebook didn't, wasn't, didn't exist in my life. Like, I just didn't use it. So that would be the first thing because that would help you uh, network with the, with the right people. And by right people, I just mean people that are uh, generally wanting to work with you that aren't trying to screw you over, or aren't sleazy, um, et cetera. Uh, and by joining these groups, you'll be able to, you'll, you'll, you'll notice it. You'll know which groups are better than others, uh, which community is healthier. Uh, some communities are, are toxic, like some, some are, some are very, very toxic. Um, as for Upwork, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that was very good um, in the beginning. The, the, what I love about Upwork or any, any um, freelancing site is the fact that you just go in with nothing and you can get a job <laughs> you can yeah. you fill out a profile you fill up an application and, and, and you get a get a job um, how long did it take you to get your first job on upwork i'm curious like you built your profile like how long and not oh, from I, like a friend of yours like a real person that didn't know you <laughs> um probably a week i would say that's it yeah like okay like yeah because uh with upwork <laughs> i mean, the the expectations aren't too high um and I don't mean this in, as a way to like shit on Upwork. Upwork's great. Um, but it's kind of like, you got to think of it as like my first month, for example, I made, I made $30 on Upwork. On like my first, <laughs> my first month in copywriting. Ooh, I could get a frappuccino today. <laughs> I, I made, I made $30. So it, it didn't take too long to, to get a, um, a client on Upwork. Um, and mine, that, paid you, also, that paid you $12 and then somebody else 28 or, <laughs> or something like that. I don't remember. Upwork also took like a bunch of money. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they have those fees, but my point is, my point is also that $30, like love, like I'm so proud of those that $30. It's insane. Anyway, sorry. Um, yeah. I don't know if I actually answered your question from one. No, I, I was just like, <laughs> I mean, I'm just, cause I know a lot of, you know, freelancers have a hard time getting clients, you know, that's, mm. that's, a, that's a big thing. So, I mean, I know like the Fiverr and Upwork and freelance and all those, those kinds of sites, like, do you have any tips or like any ideas on how, you know, people got to pay their bills. You know what I mean? Yeah, At the end yeah, of the yeah. day, you got to pay your bills. So you might want to not necessarily offer these services out there, like, but you might want to say, you know, I'll take like five gigs or 10 gigs on Upwork or whatever. Um, cause I got to pay my rent. So, so how would you, how did you go about getting those couple of first gigs? Like after the 30 bucks, your, your next hundred bucks and your next thousand dollars, like how did you get go about that? Was that just like referrals? And then you kind of got like some good reviews and stuff. Um, so I was on Upwork for maybe three, four months, I want to say. I think in total, maybe I made like $900 in those okay. like four months. Not bad. <laughs> yeah. And I was still, I also want to mention, I was still working a day job. Like it wasn't like I just threw myself in and quit my right. job. Um, I was still working a day job. So I slowly did it, but um, yeah, I was Upwork for three, four months. And with Upwork, um, it was, it was kind of like after that first, first two or three gigs you you ask you can you can say like hey can I have a uh, testimonial you can even say hey I'll like I'll, I'll write this project for you in exchange for a testimonial you don't got to pay me but I would like a testimonial um like a, a, of course assuming you like the work I did for you yeah. but anyway so that kind of just snowballs and you get more clients that way blah 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 um but I knew like 
Upwork was only going to take me so far or rather like I knew Upwork wasn't going to be the place that I wanted to find clients. And yeah. that's when I trans- really transitioned into networking. Like quite honestly, when I think back to 2020, I just, I, I just see it as me just speaking to people, like just literally just networking. And it wasn't even necessarily talking about copy. One thing I found that, that is actually has worked out very well is the fact that I'm very good at not talking about copy with people that talk about copy or business <laughs> stuff or whatever all day uh, because because they like that because it's on their mind the entire day it's all they do it's, it's their life and then when you start speaking to someone who is talking about something else entirely something that's more about them as a human it's 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 more genuine it's a genuine connection blah 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 and then voila network like 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 if that makes any sense um oh for sure and that's that's most of the email lists uh and stuff that i subscribe to there's always like a personal feel it's mm-hmm. not like business mm-hmm. business business it's like oh i feel about this or how i feel about that so uh and and i find actually just like on a side note uh, you know for anybody listening especially in the copy I like i obviously subscribe to like a lot of business type lists and i mm-hmm. find when i'm like subscribe as maria versus when i subscribe as direct paint it um i find like when people have email lists for businesses, it's like a nonstop, like in, in uh, I'm in the French part of Quebec. So I, I'm trying to find the word in English. It's called a pub- public sac. You know, the, like on Sunday when they get, you get these like advertising pamphlets in the mail. Yes. Like a whole bunch of them. It's called yeah. in Quebec, it's called public sac. Um, okay. And it's like people take it and literally throw it in the garbage. Like most people, unless you're like <laughs> 75 plus and you like try to get coupons and stuff like that. I feel like a lot of B2B uh, email lists are public sacs. It's just nonstop, like kind of in your face promo. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, there's a person reading this email. <laughs> Why don't you talk to me instead of give me this huge infographic that yep. I'm couldn't give a crap about. Yep. And the other thing about that too, is like going, tying that back into networking, it's kind of like, if you are the one, uh, copywriter that spoke to, spoke to a client about something other than copy, something interesting, like, I don't, I don't know anything, something interesting, uh, any, anything and everything. Um, you are more likely to stick out than the other copywriters that all spoke about the same thing. Like, these are my services. This is what I do. This is how much I charge. No, for sure. And and that's, you know, so we're going back to the same lesson and, and we're not trying to beat a dead horse here, but it's it's really, it's about attitude. I think in any business, whether you're a copywriter, whether you're a media buyer, there's people who do all kinds of stuff and, and people just want to kind of be in business with people they like and people that they find pleasant. So I'm happy that in, in your, your short amount of time on this planet, you've learned that already because <laughs> that is, you know, I think, you know, that, that takes people a lot of time to learn. So if you're listening and you're kind of starting out, keep that in mind. Like, uh, although like I've had like in my business, my first year, I'm my first year in business, I made $17,000. Um, which, you know, when your rent, like when you're in a big city, uh, you know, it's, yeah, it was very rough. much, you know, so, uh, you know, and, and, I kept a positive attitude throughout. I was like, you know what? I'm going to figure this out. Let me just, you know, keep going, keep going. I didn't have a day job. I, I decided to quit my day job. Don't oh, do oh, that. You, oh, no. Don't do that. I, did, I, did, I didn't do that, but why do you do that? <laughs> I did that. Well, basically, you know, when I was working uh, with the Pornhub team and stuff like that in 2009, they decided to sell the company, like the initial owners. Like I wasn't there. Oh, um, I, oh right, right. Yes. So okay. Yeah, the, the initial ownership sold. Um, and I just thought it was a good time to exit because I was like, I don't know if I feel like being this like corporate kind of environment anymore. It was starting to become very corporate, big company feel. And I was like, I, I don't feel like it. But I was extremely nice because I was making some pretty decent cash there, um, especially for my age. And I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'll just quit and find stuff freelance and whatever. Yeah, no. <laughs> Freelancing is it's not that easy. Is hard. It's, it's, it's yeah. hard. It's, 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 it's hard, especially in the beginning. And um, I've been freelancing since I've started. And to be honest, I, I would recommend like freelancing is great. Freelancing is amazing. There's so many, everybody talk, you, you've mentioned this before, like everybody talks about their wins. Cause you know, like you deserve it. Like, yeah, yeah. share, share that win. But freelancing comes with a lot of like, like dark sides too. Like some, like yeah. some, like hard, like hard sides, like, 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 um, like, like burnout. Like that would be the biggest thing because like at least with a a day job or a nine to five um or a full-time gig it's kind of like that's it you work within those hours or you work those projects and you're not thinking about anything else 
Yeah. That's your focus, right? With freelancing, your 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 mind, your energies, it, it's it's essentially scattered scattered everywhere because you got to work on e- client acquisition, um, uh, and then working on the copy projects, and then also improving your skill. Um, that that's really important, and at the same time, you know, there's there's the important point that you mentioned is you know you have good months, you have bad months, you have to, you know, juggle all these different things, but there's also months where there's crickets. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with crickets? Like, oh crap, like dry, (laughs) there's nobody, I don't know. Everybody's kind of like, eh, vacation mode, for example. I, um, (laughs) oh God, like crickets, crickets are like, those months are terrifying. Like they're just, they're just, honestly, they're outright terrifying. Um, and so far what I've done is, is again, just tying it back to reach out to my network because like with freelancing, yeah, there's, there's cold outreach, cold emails, uh, samples, spec work, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I've done all that, but to be completely honest with you, the most success I've had is just simply reaching out to my network, just simply saying hi. And sometimes just being just outright honest, like, um, like, Hey, this month is, uh, really tight for me. It's uh, it's not it's not going well this month. Uh, I may not make rent, et cetera, et cetera. Just being that little honest person, like, would you happen to have any work, or do you know anyone that would like? And that's literally like the message. It's an honest, straight shoot, genuine message, and that has been what has saved my ass. To be completely honest with you, I would not be where I am if not for the people that have met the past year. Like that's why I keep emphasizing network because it is your greatest asset like it really really is yeah. like more and, than everything else and people want to help each other like if i can help you why not right if it's not going to change anything in my life and i know i can connect with people <laughs> like i think inherently just people like to feel good about helping others so i mean as yeah. long as you have a good rapport with somebody and stuff like that if you come to me and say hey maria i'm looking to uh, you know uh manage somebody's email list you know like i'm you know i have some some time and you know i can use the income and stuff like that if i know somebody why wouldn't i connect somebody, you know what I mean? It doesn't change anything for me. Why wouldn't I? So it's the same thing. Like if you're, if you're looking for work or whatever, it it doesn't hurt if you have a a decent sized network to be like, Hey guys, you know, this month's kind of, it's not super busy and I, I'm a really good, you know, health copywriter or whatever you're, you're in just kind of be a little bit targeted and you never know. Sometimes people will just come up and like seize the opportunity or, you know, uh, take a chance. So that's, that's mm-hmm. interesting. Uh, uh, just one last interesting question. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're talking about like copy and, and like you having to manage, you know, clients and work yeah. and, and getting better at your craft. How, how is the best way to practice copy? Is it like, doing a whole bunch of emails and I'm going to ask like a couple of questions all together. Cause I, I know your answer is going to be kind of all encompassing. So, you know, there's email, there's long form, there's writing for ads. Um, how do you manage all those different types of writing and what is the best way to practice or to get better at it? Obviously you're not working for somebody. So nobody's going to tell mm-hmm. you, Hey girl, this stinks. Like you're going to, you're a freelancer. So you're doing it for different people. So how do you get incrementally better? Um, stick to one thing okay like that would that would be uh, that would be the biggest thing I didn't do that and it's and it was like I, I felt scatterbrained um and when I say stick to one thing I specifically especially for new copywriter I would I would say emails because that is the most easy easiest thing to grasp especially when you're when you're starting out and it forces you to write every day um like I I don't know. What's the word? I feel like I was just thrown into like the, I forget the phrase, but you're thrown into deep water or whatever. Lions then. Yeah. Okay. Because, <laughs> because I didn't do that. I did, I did the opposite and I, as grateful as I am, because it forced me to learn how to write sales letters very, very quickly and research well, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, I, I started, I, I started backwards. I did sales letters first. So for the, once I joined a master, so mastermind, I wrote maybe, four to five sales letters back to back how long were they like long form sales letters anywhere between okay. six to ten thousand words maybe oh wow okay like huge 
huge. They're huge, yeah. And and it, and it's it's hard, especially in the beginning. Sales letters aren't easy. There's the whole lot more moving parts than than emails. So I would recommend recommend emails. Um, trying to remember your other question. <laughs> I, I mean, I, it's it's just a general question on like how to get better at your craft. So you're saying you know stick with something that's a little bit more attainable. Yeah, like stick stick with one thing. Okay, one thing one shorter, thing. and then and then brand yourself as that. So then you don't end up again. I've made all these mistakes, you don't end up like being offered other gigs, which, which I mean, like, okay, it's, 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 it's a balance. You want to be exposed to as much as possible, but you also don't want to veer too far off because if you do, then again, it comes back to the whole, like you have your focus, a hundred percent, your focus, and it's just going to be scattered everywhere. So if you really want to get better as fast as you can, it's just focus, dial in on one, one, one. Thing. Would you say one industry too? Like, would you say like, oh, just stick to like health copy or, I mean, I feel like the, the, the one thing that I hear a lot is like uh, supplements and like health type stuff. Like people do a lot of that. So would you say, try to get into something that's a little bit more niche or really stick to something that's a little bit more, you know, easy, easy. Like there's more people obviously in the health space than there yeah. are like financial credit offers, for example, or whatever. Um, I would say cast a wide net first because because you just won't know what you like, either you like writing or what you're good at, and, and unless you do that. And also, um, the another reason why I say email specifically is because it's easier to find clients that need daily emails. Like clients need daily emails. A lot of clients do. Not a lot of clients, at least I don't really know of any need daily sales letters like you don't you don't hear <laughs> you don't hear not. that no no <laughs> yes. maybe a, like if you're working with a company that's like really like testing offers like this maybe every quarter or so like you could get like a new yeah. it takes a lot of time to put all that stuff together test it shows, does and, it does know. it does and 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 so that uh, point being that will also get you to get the ball rolling and get you able to uh write every day and get paid for it and learn quicker like it's just it's just a, like a snowball effect so last question, I lied that the, the one before was my <laughs> last question. This is actually my last question. I'm curious, like when you submit something to a, to a customer or like when you, you get work done and it, like you give it a, like, what is the process once you submit something? Like walk me through, do you ask for feedback right away? Do you wait for them to reach out to you? Do you like, how do you kind of build that relationship once you've completed a project? Um, well, so I hand in a, so this happened yesterday. So I, I handed in a project. Um, and then I say something like, I don't know, uh, here is, here is your whatever. Um, let me know if you'd like any changes, blah, 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 something, something like that. A very short message, like here it is. Um, and then eventually they get back to you. So in this case, the client got back to me very quickly with feedback. And then, um, and then I'm now I'm going to do uh, the bit of edits that he wants. Okay. Like, do you, and that's do you usually proactively and then, look for feedback? Like, do you like <clears throat> go after people or do you just submit and kind of like, let it be like, I, this is not a trick question. I'm just curious. Like yeah. what, what is a better methodology? Like, well, it's kind of like you get feedback at least in, in so far in my experience, you just automatically get the feedback. I've never actually asked for it. Clients automatically do it. And it's, it's so it's because like, cause they want, the copy dialed in. So it's kind of like, I don't know, it's I literally either it's been like, Hey, this is great. Thanks. You did a great job. Or it's like, Hey, this part's great, but this part uh, could be change it to this. Okay. And, and then, and then, and then that's that. Is your, that's rule in been general, so far. is your rule in general to just do the edits? Like what? Cause I know there's a lot of, uh, there's also a lot of talk about people who are like, Oh, like this person's really grinding me or like, you know, the, the, the rate doesn't reflect the amount of work that was put in after and stuff like that. Like, how do you, how do you navigate that? I don't know if you've ever kind of come across that scenario where you hand something in and they say, change this. Then you hand it back. It's like, change that. We don't like that. Like, when do you, how do you navigate the like, okay, well that's enough now. <laughs> Not doing anything more. <laughs> um, as of right now, I haven't experienced that. It's been at most, at most two edits. It's just because you're the best. Well, no, <laughs> no. You know what? Uh, Everybody listening just hired Gerlin. That's it. That's why. So. I... <laughs> I don't know. Like, uh, it's a good question. It is a good question because you do need to draw a fine line. So it's like, I guess if, I don't know, I guess uh, if I had a client and it was a constant back and forth, I would just put a time limit, uh, be like, hey, I'm, I'm happy to do another, I don't know, three edits within the next 30 days, but then I'm done. Okay. Do you formalize something that like before? that? No, no. I, I haven't, but um, I should. 
Okay. I really, <laughs> like, well, you like, should like ba- basically as you grow, it's probably a good idea to have like maybe like a one pager kind of like this is what I do. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's a, that's a good tip. And um, do you have any last kind of like I don't know. I want to say a tagline just because I'm cheesy. Like anything a you want. Tagline. Kind of, yeah. Like uh, <laughs> you go. <laughs> oh my do you god. Have any, do you have any any last advice for for you know. N- any, any, like any kind of copywriter or freelancer that's kind of starting out, just like one last key thing that they can think about. Um, I, it's going, this might sound a little weird, but freelancing entrepreneurship business in general will lead you to such a in, internal, like self growth, the journey. And that sounds so woo woo, but <laughs> It's true because the reality is when you're freelancing or your business owner or whatever, it's on you. I mean, like you can't really, especially when you're starting out, like you can't, there's no one to blame. You have no staff. Um, It's, it's all on you. So it's really hard to let yourself off the hook because you can't, if something doesn't work or if you lose a client or if you didn't do that great, like, again, it's on you. Um, But what I'm trying to get at is, um, yes, you, uh, working, you need to work hard. Yes. You need to work smart and yes, you need to hone in on your craft because that's what it is. It's a craft. Um, but, and, and that will get you very, very far. It can get you very far, but if you really want to go the whole way, you gotta work on all that crap, all that baggage that you have inside. Cause the reality is when you work out that, all that internal garbage that you have, um, it reflects in your life, in, including your business, including that the business that you're running. And that has been the biggest, like, that I've experienced with freelancing, with this industry. Because mind you, I came from a science background. So, like, this is a complete 180. I knew, not, knew absolutely nothing. But, like, that's what is actually making me fall in love with this industry, uh, with, this, with this craft. It makes me want to just get as good as I possibly can because it goes hand in hand with working with myself internally and working on my mindset, uh, confidence, uh, anything, anything and everything. It's just, it's beautiful. Choose that sounds. It's very, very beautiful. Those, those are some wise words. I do have to say, I completely agree with them. And I, just to add that last sentence is, you know, if we had to summarize that is you got to think on your toes when you're a freelancer, you got to yeah. really <laughs> like, really like when you're faced with something is like, you have no, nobody necessarily to ask is yeah you can reach out to your network and stuff like that but like in the moment you're on a contract and somebody asks you something it's like holy shit what do i do so you you know you get really i think what you're you're trying to say and what you're saying like <clears throat> in general is that you get really good at relationship building and talking to people in addition to your craft because mm-hmm. you need both so same thing with me sometimes i had to skate on ice and it's like yeah i'm you know obviously i know a lot of stuff about merchant accounts and like the technical side and you know integrations and how to convert more sales and all this fun stuff but sometimes when somebody asks you a question about like how you do business or something that they don't agree with you have to learn how to get people on your side so uh and for them to like you so you know thinking <laughs> on your toes and getting um and getting stuff done for people is going to be like one of the most important skills I would even say more so because I know a lot of smart, very, very smart people who can't get jobs. You know what I mean? Because they don't know how to put themselves out there and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, there should be a yeah. class in school. You know, people should like, have this like finishing class or something. Um, yeah. To get there. Yeah. Because it, it's true. Like, you know, what you mentioned, how uh, you mentioned earlier about the whole, like, uh, like you reached out to me and it takes guts to do that. Like uh, when I was in Montreal, um, I, I see what you mean in the sense of, cause it's kind of like, now that I reached out to you, it's kind of like all of a sudden I'm on this podcast. That wasn't even the goal. It was just more like, Hey, I want to say hi to Maria. Yeah. But that's, what it, that's what I mean. But like, it, it's, it's because you've worked on, or I've worked on just like being more confident, being, realizing that it's okay to just say hi. It doesn't have to be this big thing and just, just going for it. But my point is, it's like that internal, inter, that internal dialogue, that baggage that you have to take care of. It, 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 it's, it's weird. It's, it's almost ironic that you got to do all this like woo spiritual like mental stuff to get your business to be at the best place that it could possibly be yeah and I and actually you were not the first person who did that like sometimes when people talk to me like you're like oh I can't believe you said yes I'm like (laughs) (laughs) like I don't I don't see myself as like I'm like well yeah whatever thank you Gerlene thank you for Uh, having me 
Yeah, no, this was super fun. And, um, you know, if everybody listening, if you enjoyed this episode, we're going to have contact, uh, Gerling's contact information. Um, you can reach out to her. She's very, I think you're on Facebook a lot. Yes. So yeah. Um, <laughs> and we'll put the links on there. And if you like the episode, then share, subscribe uh, for more great content and leave us some, some comments about what you think about what Gerling said. Thank you so much, Gerling. And we'll be in touch. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Hope you found today's session valuable. If you have any questions for me or just want to connect, please feel free to visit my website, mariasparagis.com. That's M-A-R-I-A-S-P-A-R-A-G-I-S.com. I'd love to hear what you're working on. So drop me a line on any hot button issues your business is experiencing. And remember, don't worry about failure. You only have to be right once. 